The Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, is expecting the birth of her second child any day now. In fact, the official due date is thought to be this weekend. The new baby will be the fourth in line to the throne after the birth of Prince George in 2012, and the excitement then was immense. <laughs> This is World News tonight. The royal baby is here. A boy for Prince William and Kate, two years after their fairy tale wedding. It's like a party. It's really, really like a party down here. Yeah, it really turned out to be a party because when we first got here, there wasn't a lot of people here. We got here like around, what, five? Four or three. Actually. Yeah, and, was, and was like there six. wasn't a lot of people okay. here. Yeah. And now it's like, look, everyone's here. <laughs> From what I see, everyone is celebrating. So far, it's been the best Monday in my life. <laughs> I'm over the moon. I'm so excited. I literally just got here and I was like, oh, my God, it's here. <laughs> so, yeah, just got in time to burst my bubbles and raise a toast to the new... Prince. I could not be more excited if I tried. I'm not from here, I don't live here, but I am so thrilled that Kate and Will had a baby boy. It's amazing. Well, okay, I really thought it was going to be a girl. I really, I really thought it was going to be a girl, but I am so happy it's a boy. Will deserves a little boy. It's going to be amazing. He's going to be great. Future King of England. We're very excited. From ABC News, this is a special edition of World News. News with Diane Sawyer, the royal baby, heir to the throne. That was then. Are people as excited this time round? Well, we sent our British Affairs correspondent Rob Broomby round to the hospital in West London. Well, I just wandered into a sad-looking back street behind Paddington Station here in West London. It's close to St Mary's Hospital, so there are people spilling out onto the streets to discuss outpatient appointments and a whole host of medical problems. And you turn a corner and there are satellite trucks, media vehicles galore, and you realise the countdown to the royal birth has begun because slotted away here is the Lindo wing of St Mary's Hospital where Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, the future Queen of England, is to give birth to her second child. The world's press are gathering. <laughs> well, there's two correspondents here from Tokyo working hard already on your laptops. Why are you here? We are quite interested in royal family of your country. Oh my You've got God. one of your own. <laughs> yeah, but there's a difference between Japanese royal family and the British royal family. British royal family is more open to the public. Maybe a little bit too open. <laughs> As he has mentioned, we also have a royal family. So that's why you know people are crazy about their baby. You know, we really get excited about it. Uh, there's another gentleman here. You're wearing Union flags, uh, top, bottom, on your head, but almost everywhere. You're wrapped in them, aren't you? What's your name? John, John Lockery. John, what brings you out? We're all waiting for um, a birth of a, a princess or a prince. Can you just wait till you read it on the news? Oh, no, I'd like to come support them. It's nice to see the history. And are you camped out? Is this your tent? Is this my tent? Well, I go to a friend of mine. I sleep here and she sleeps here. Oh, so you sleep out on the bench here? Yeah. I was here last time for eight days. And how out. long are you going to stay this time? Well, I've been here four days up to now. I'm a Diana fan, and I love William and Harry. And now Kate has joined the thing, and I really like her. She's a lovely person. The Queen's great-grandchild. Think about that. So you're intent on being here when the news is broken? Yes, exactly. Everybody cheers, you know. <laughs> I'm the foreign correspondent for Bild, German daily paper. Germany is, is very, very interested in the royals, very interested. They love Kate and William. They love the Queen. Why do your country crave this royal story, do you think? I think there's a certain continuity, isn't there, in the Queen. I mean, she's 89 years old now. And I think people like the steadiness of her and that she doesn't waver. And are you likely to be here right the way through now until we have a baby? I will be here, even if it takes another two weeks, which could easily happen because babies are never on time. Can I ask you a personal question? If you're here more than two days, do you need an epidural? <laughs> I've done my, my babies. I've got three children. They were all terribly late. So you can turn out the copy, whatever. I can, indeed, yes. <laughs> reviews into our next conversation because we're going to talk to Grant Harold, who's in Bristol in Western England. He used to be a royal butler. He worked at Highgrove House looking after the Prince of Wales and also William and Kate. He left just after their wedding and he now teaches royal etiquette. Grant, good morning. Welcome to the programme. Good morning, Julian. Thank you for having me on. What exactly is the role of a of a modern day butler? The the role changed quite a lot since um, a lot of people say to me, "Is it still like 
uh, Carson's time in Downton Abbey. And sadly, <laughs> it's not quite like that now. I mean, butlers have to be able to turn their hand to everything. Uh, by everything, um, so there's there's no, there's no stone left unturned for you. No, I mean butlers. Well, my my experience as, as a butler is is one minute you might be uh, seven at the table, and the next minute you could be doing the phones. Uh, the next minute you might be ironing a shirt, doing a bit of valeting, uh, possibly even a bit of cooking, uh, which wasn't one of my my strong points, <laughs> but I I still tried. <laughs> and how much did the royals rely on you? I think. I say to people with butlers, the problem is for anybody, you do, you can get used to it. I mean, I think if I had my own butler, I'd, I'd be, I would love it. Uh, you, you get used to having somebody there doing things. And I think, uh, I'm not too sure exactly from the raw point of view, but I'd certainly say from anybody that I know that has got a butler, they always say that they don't know what they would do without, without them. Mm. Uh, and those I mentioned, <clears throat> the Prince of Wales, William, Kate, they always mm. were extremely... Uh, generous to you and you were very happy working alongside them absolutely i mean i was just saying to somebody actually that they uh they're, they're a wonderful family and taking away the whole the whole royal side of it you know just as a as a, a normal family they uh they're, they're fantastic and i had i had many wonderful years there right but they're not an ordinary family are they <laughs> I suppose the, I, I think the thing is even just listening to the uh, the, the bit on just before when you're you're chatting well, with people, and say, it is, people are all around the globe are waiting for, for one of them to give birth. It's extraordinary because when you work when you work for these families again, whether it's the royal family or, or I was lucky enough to work for the Bedfords <clears> as well, <throat> you see them as uh, as a fa- you, you see them as your family uh, and you get to know them like you'd get to know your own family. So you you kind of you don't really see this side of it. And I used to do. I'd work on royal events and from the inside and you'd see it as any other kind of dinner party while on the outside you'd have the world's media. So it was it was quite extraordinary and it used to, we used to find it quite amusing actually. Uh, Mark, of the two of you, you were the more enthusiastic so by all, by all means come in and have a word with Grant. I think a bit of irrationality is quite a good thing for political systems actually. <laughs> um, you know, when everything is sort of so tied up and everything's put to a vote then it all it gets a bit tight and inhuman so that's one of the reasons why I'm a rather a fan of the royal family. But I think another thing actually is that um, they're not just celebrities actually although they can be treated like that because while celebrities will do a little bit of charitable work on the, on the side um, the royal family's main task now is charitable work is service and I think that does give it a slightly different feel than just sort of the fact that they're stared at around the world mm. um, Go on Grant yeah. No I was going to say absolutely I mean I know today that they are people do class them as, as celebrities, for ob- obviously because they're they're on TV and they're in magazines and all the rest of it quite a lot. Uh, but I suppose the difference for them is they they were, I say sadly, it's probably not the case. But you know you, they're born into it. You know it's not something that they suddenly decide they they oh, want no, they to don't do. Have much so, choice really, do they? No, they don't. They don't really have much choice. <laughs> no. Um, Jane, did you want to share any further doubts at this juncture? No, I think the royal family in Britain are fairly popular, that if you had a a referendum on it, people would would choose to stick with the the monarchy. What I just find fascinating is why it's so interesting to people from all over the world, uh, Mm. seemingly particularly in the United States, this nostalgia after having Mm. a a revolution to get rid of them. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) They they seemingly can't get enough of them. Um, And Grant, describe your forthcoming week. I mean, are you kind of sort of waiting for the phone to ring? I mean, how do you play it? Absolutely. It's, It's a bit tricky. Tricky because uh, you know like, today's my birthday, so I'm a bit. Oh, I was a, I was a, thank you. I was a bit <laughs> concerned sing. because I thought I don't really know if I want to share my birthday, share the limelight with the uh, with a royal baby. Um, <laughs> but it has been a bit like that, you know. The the phone has been going, and again, it is trying to work out what what I can what I can do and what I can't do, um, which is but it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's it's nice to see so many people getting yes. excited about it. Do they send you a card? Who's that? The um, the royals for your birthday. The, for my birthday? No, no, not not when you when you work for them you do. But after, well, I did oh. actually have a royal. I did actually have a member of the royal family send me a card oh, uh, yesterday, so I have had one. So, so they've been following your guidance <laughs> on etiquette. You see, I'm delighted to hear it. Um, Grant, thank you so much for coming on. You're listening to Weekend with me, Julian Warwicker. You heard some music.